Good afternoon fellow tankers, Commander Denali here, and today we're doing the nuts and bolts video on the snake bite. The snake bite is a, is a pretty amazing light tank. I know a lot of people, uh, they don't like it. Um, I've, I've heard of a lot of uh, mixed feelings about it, but I ended up uh, purchasing it uh, just because it looks really neat and uh, I needed a uh, premium British tank for a crew trainer. Um, but yeah, as you see here, uh, it's got camo net laid over it, and it just looks like a nice ghillie sniper, you know, a nice uh, bush sniper. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be uh, really fast because it is on the Cromwell chassis and everything like that. So yeah, here we go. We're taking a look at the stats. And the hull has 42 millimeters of armor in the front, 42 in the sides, and 32 in the rear. It has 51 in the front of the turret, 51 in the sides of the turret, and the rear of the turret as well. It can go uh, over six, uh, over almost 80 kilometers per hour. It's got 650 horsepower, and the rotation of both the chassis and the turret is 52 degrees per second. And the rate of fire on this is amazing at 20 rounds per minute, which means the reload on it is about three seconds. The view range is a base of 370, and it has an average camo rating. So what I did is I went ahead and I put camouflage net, coated optics, and improved ventilation on it. Um, and that's just uh, how I'm gonna run it. Uh, it does have uh, 44 standard rounds, uh, 20 uh, APCR rounds, which are your gold rounds, and I didn't do any HE rounds. Um, but pretty much, if you wanna uh, compare the gun to any other Cromwell, you can compare it to the Knight. Um, kind of if you take the uh the standard round of the night that's what the apcr round is off of this with only a difference of one millimeter of penetration um as far as damage uh, you do about 110 115 damage per shot so yeah i mean as you can see here that's uh that's a, a pretty good tank for speed um most of the times when you're shooting at tanks you're gonna have to get side shots because you just don't have the penetration even on tier six heavies. Um, so you will have to do flanking shots, but yeah, that's just uh, pretty much how light tanks work. So our first replay was actually our first game in the snake bite and it was on wide park during the rain. And uh, in this match, uh, when I'm in a light tank, what I like to do is I like to uh, rush the middle where the train tracks are, pop over and get as many uh, enemies spotted as I possibly can. And as you can see, this thing, uh, it, it'll move, it'll get there really quick. So, okay, here we are. And as you can see, I'm running a, a crew XP times 6 op. I still saved up a bunch of those from when Wargaming gave them out to everybody. And I, uh, I was saving them for when I would get a, uh, a British premium tank. And it just happened to be, we got one, you know, just after doing the hammer ops. So yeah, as you can see, the uh, acceleration of this tank is, uh, is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm able to get up to the hill in uh, record time in about 15 seconds. And just pop over and spot a lot of enemies. And uh, as you can see, I jumped a little bit further than I wanted to over. Um, but I got, you know, most of the enemies spotted. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I didn't know the speed, and I was I was still unfamiliar with the tank, so when I went to slow down and stop at the top, it, it just kind of shot over a little bit. And as you can see, I'm just trying to keep the uh, enemies lit up here, and uh, just uh, trying to stay out of their, you know, line of sight so they don't shoot me. So I decided to push back at this point um, and just kind of aim over the hill just in case they wanted to come over at me. And as you can see, I shot that guy there. Um, just a snapshot on him because he poked over the hill. And uh, one of our teammates shot him as well and he lost about half of his hit points. So, you know, that's what happens uh, if you wait too long before you crest the hill. So we decided to just push back up and... Uh, you know, I noticed we were really strong on the left side. Most of our guys were that way. So I just wanted to kind of use the hill and, uh, you know, shoot over long ways. Because you can get that gun depression and uh, put it to work. And as you see, I'm just uh, poking over, trying to take a shot or two. And, uh, you know, I stay in positions a little bit too long in this match. Um, but since I wasn't taking any damage at that point, you know, I didn't think it was a big thing. 
And here you see the enemies there, they're flanking, so they're strong on the other side. They didn't have uh, too many people come over this way. And there we go, we take a shot, so we decide to just uh, relocate. But yeah, this is truly a light tank. Um, it's very fast, it's very mobile. Um, the reason I did coded optics on this is I don't want to be a, a passive scout where you just, uh, or I'm sorry, an active scout where you're just sitting passively in a bush and just constantly detecting. Um, I actually wanted to be active driving around and you know, when you do that, you could actually make an opportunity for flanking shots. And as you can see, that guy put a couple big rounds into me. Um, not necessarily big rounds, but this thing doesn't have a whole lot of hit points. So, you know, even small shots like that can, uh, can do you up. And as you can see there, uh, you know, brand new to this tank, this first match, and uh, my aim was a little bit off on that. I was just trying to shoot that, uh, that box car out of the way so I could potentially get a shot on that tank. Um, but my teammates killed him. And here we go, we're just gonna kind of creep up here, get in position, and try to get a side shot while these guys are, you know, distracted on uh, other friendly tanks. And as you can see, even shooting this guy in the side, I'm just, uh, no, I wasn't penetrating, so I decided to just keep shooting in the tracks, and I actually did penetrate uh, a couple shots, or a shot, I should say. And that was with uh, my APCR rounds, so I mean... Not super effective on, uh, on penetration and actual damage, but you can uh, you can get some good side shots and uh, damage from the guy. And as you can see there, I fired an APCR at a tank destroyer, and I only put uh, one penetrating round into him, two now, and three, and I believe I fired a total of six shots at him. Had I not caught him on fire, I probably would have uh, spent two or three more rounds uh, just trying to get one to penetrate. And right now, I'm just, uh, I'm pretty much just using my distance. I'm, I'm playing a little bit more cautious because, uh, you know, I'm potentially a one shot for some of the enemy tanks. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to keep my distance here and just play a supportive role. And as you can see, I'm just trying to, you know, lead my shots and snipe on these guys a little bit flanking shots like that, there you go, that's that's going to be your money maker in this tank. So this tank, it, it's not going to do a whole lot of, uh, you know, damage at all throughout a match. I mean, you can get some damage and you can pick up kills. Um, as you see there, I picked up two kills in this match. Um, I did get a, you know, a few penetrating shots and everything, but you're not going to be, you know, holding up with mediums and heavies, so I got 7 penetrating shots on that. I detected 13 out of the 15 enemies, picked up a scout medal. We did 783 damage and we assisted for 246. And even though we fired a bunch of premium rounds, we still made 23,000 silver and we got 1700 experience on that match. So it's not it's not a bad tank at all, like I said, it's, it's quick to get in position and I mean I was only in the middle of the leaderboards, so... I, I was pretty impressed with this tank considering that was my first match just uh, being able to relocate that's one of the things that I, I absolutely love about quick tanks you can just uh, relocate and throw your enemies off and you can create flanking shots for yourself but here we go we're gonna be on uh, the st steps this match um, I think I had played about you know 10 or 15 games at this point and I was you know getting uh, fairly used to this tank So, yeah, we're going to be playing this uh, a little bit more differently and in some cases uh, a little bit more aggressively than we did on the last map. So using this thing's speed, of course, I'm going to try to get up into a uh, spotting position. Um, with this map, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to uh, be more of the aggressive scout uh, for the simple reason there's really two lanes of avenue for you know flanking your enemy because if you try to go straight up the middle with a force you're just uh, gonna get shot from all sides so as you see I just uh, pretty much did a strafing run I didn't stop and park in a bush um, there is that rock in the uh, F7 area that I like to park at sometimes depending on what type of tank I'm in and spot out enemies and then pull a shot every now and again um, like when I'm in my bulldog for instance 
but in this one I decided to uh, do that original strafing run and then, uh, you know, just uh, just pull back a little bit further and uh, just try to spot some enemies and try to get some flanking shots. Another good thing about this tank is uh, it's just how low profile it is. You know, if you're used to playing the Cromwells at all, it's it's pretty good. And since I was detected there, I went ahead and uh, shot around just to you know try to get some damage out. Um, we did pin, so that was good. We only did uh, just over 100 damage, um, which is you know how how good this gun is. So I mean, it was pretty average roll. All right now we're just trying to uh, readjust ourselves. So that way we, uh, you know, can get some more shots and then uh, potentially shoot some more guys and uh, stay undetected. So as you can see here, I'm just trying to snipe out uh, the enemy's commander's hatch right there. And I just, uh, I'm unable to do it. But I mean, the reload on this is amazing. I fired three rounds while he was parked before he realized I was just going to keep trying to hit that commander's hatch. So at this point we had a lot of uh, a lot of our uh, friendly guys on the right side here. So I decided to push up, you know, try to spot some more enemies and get some more assisted damage. And here's where we see uh, a unfriendly heavy tank. And uh, you know, I backed up. I wasn't sure if I was detected or not. I hadn't learned uh, sixth sense all the way on this crew yet. So you know, I was just uh, I was just pretty much playing it safe because uh, the gun on that tank can uh, can do a lot of damage to me. And as you can see, I was just poking up, and uh, I did get detected by him, so... But there we go, we get some assisted damage on him. So now we're just going to pull up to the next IV line, poke over, and uh, see what we can do. So here we go, we poke over, and we see that guy. We put one into his side, and then we see the tank destroyer, and I, I realize he's the bigger threat, and he's got less armor. So I decided just to poke over and uh, take some shots at him. And here we go. Unfortunately, he did get behind uh, cover there, but with the speed of this tank, you know, you can you can back up and uh, get behind IV lines yourself really quick. So I mean, it is it is pretty good for uh, for doing hill battles. Um, if you're doing like a light on light, or if you're doing a tank that you know can't really aim on you all that well. But as you see there, I'm taking damage from uh, from the left there. And I believe it was that medium tank that was behind that heavy tank that was uh, shooting me. But yeah, I'm pretty much just trying to get some assisted damage, you know, spot out the enemies. And then uh, when I get the chance, I fire a couple rounds and uh, do what little bit of damage I can do. The great thing is about this is uh, with its speed and everything, you can relocate and you can get behind an enemy. So here in a moment you're going to see me uh, rushing forward and there, there's a heavy tank up here and I'm pretty much uh, going to go up and get behind him at an angle and he's going to be distracted on uh, one of my teammates. Well, actually wait, we go after the other snake bite first. So yeah, here we are using our mobility. Um, as far as shooting on the move, I don't have the, uh, the crew skills for that yet. So, I mean, I was doing what I could, and I only got one penetrating shot out of that. Uh, but fortunately for me, the other snake bite was, uh, was new to his tank as well, and he uh, only landed one on me. But yeah, here we go with that heavy tank. We're just going to go ahead and flank around him, and we're going to get right up beside him. And while he's distracted on our friendly, we're just going to put a round into his fuel tank there, pop back over, try another one, but it doesn't pin. And then we get rushed by that medium take a shot, give him one back, he tries to get up on us and ram us, but we just back up and put one more in him. And then, yeah, so, the speed of this tank is, uh, is pretty good. So the only thing left now is the uh, tank destroyer on the enemy team, and he's right there in front of me. And we try to shoot one on the move and miss. And here we're going to try another, and we actually land that one, and then our teammate shoots him and he's dead. So yeah, that's pretty much how I've played the tanks so far. Um, I've only done about 20 matches or so, but it's, it makes some good silver, and uh, it's going to be a great crew trainer for me. So on that one, we did 1,100 damage. Uh, we assisted for 1,600. We got a Confederate and a Scout medal, and we did 11 penetrations. 2,300 experience and 30,000 silver. And like I said, we did fire a bunch of premiums, so yeah. Anyway, you guys go out, kill some shit, and I hope to see you on the battlefield.